BMW X3 has become a pretty familiar sight on UK roads these last 10 years. Well, prepare to never look at one in quite the same way ever again, because there is a new BMW M Division version of the BMW X3, and this is it, the X3 M competition. There is also the X4 M competition, which we'll come to later, very similar. Now, let's not get too bogged down on the M Division fast 4x4 should they shouldn't they debate because we've had it before and they're doing it anyway and they'll continue to because people want to buy them. There are in any case more interesting things to talk about here. First of all there's what's under the bonnet. So this car is the first new M car to get the all new 3 litre twin turbo straight six which is also going to power the next M3. So important engine and the headline figures are 503 brake horsepower and 443 pound foot of torque which is more torque than any petrol straight six that BMW has ever made. So you could call that main draw number one. Let's have a listen to it shall we? I've got it in sport mode, I've got the noisy exhaust on so we should be able to hear it. Yeah I mean you'd say it sounds Kind of subtly different. It's a variation on a theme for sure. It still sounds like a BMW straight six, but it's definitely got a sort of slightly distinct audible character, isn't it? It's a bit different, and I'm not sure how much of that character is genuine and how much of it is coming out of the stereo speakers because BMW have got a bit of a track record on that. But it's convincing enough. Peak power is above 6,000 RPM and it revs all the way to 7,200. So it's a free rearing engine. It's gonna be one of the main reasons you buy this car, I suspect. Does it feel fast? Yes. This is obviously a two ton car. So it's not gonna feel as fast in this as it might in an M3, but it's still fast. And claim for 0 to 62 acceleration is 4.1 seconds in this car. There are quicker cars in its class, but not by much. It's 177 miles an hour flat out. Not that we'll be doing that today on these roads around New Jersey. Yeah, certainly a good engine. Certainly a selling point. Let's move on. So where else have those M Division engineers been lavishing their attention? Well, they've done the usual thorough job. These cars have M specific adaptive sport suspension, which is via steel coils, um, but it's adaptively damped and the axles have been variously stiffened and tweaked and the wheel geometries front and rear have been adjusted also for a bit more camber. The competition versions of the car ride on 21 inch forged wheels which this car has and the body in white has got various reinforcements under the, underneath the car and around the subframes all adding the stiffness that this car needs given the, the role that it's intended for. For drivetrain the car uses an 8 speed torque converter also with a lockup clutch and that drives through the same four wheel drive system ostensibly that the current M5 uses which I reckon will be another decent selling point for this car. That means it's got the same selectable torque distribution modes that the M5 has got so it's got four wheel drive and four wheel drive sport. It doesn't have the two wheel drive mode that the M5 has because BMW kind of figured that customers who buy an SUV would want four-wheel drive all of the time. Seems a reasonable assumption to me and you know when you drive an M5 in four-wheel drive sport mode it doesn't feel like it needs more torque at the rear wheels does it? it? Never has to me so shouldn't hold this car back in terms of handling on the track. We'll see in due course. Beyond that of course it's got the active M differential for the rear axle um, without which you know no modern BMW M car could show its face in public I dare say. So how's the handling on the road? Well, it's good. It's good, it's quite M car. There's the usual choice on driver modes for suspension and steering and powertrain. So you can set it up pretty much however you want and then you've got your noisy button for the exhaust um, and you can choose your four-wheel drive mode as well and your traction control mode. And it's all very complicated these days but that's the way these cars are. So you just get with the program and then you find the mode you like and that's where you'll leave it and it works fine so there's plenty of weight in the steering which makes it feel like a performance car there's good steering response body control is very good I've, I've had it set on the kind of middle setting most of the day 
um, so sport mode for powertrain, suspension and steering and I like it, you know, it sort of feels sporty without feeling uncomfortable, it doesn't maybe have that um, that ability to be really comfy, it doesn't have the, the dynamic range that maybe something like a Porsche Macan has or even an F, a Jaguar F-Pace SVR, it's a bit more pragmatic and comfy and real world but it is it's more simple than a lot of these cars. That might appeal to you, you know, if, if you if you don't like the the sort of breadth of ability of some of these SUVs and you never really feel like you can get through all that complexity and find the car underneath, I think that you'll probably like this car because there's a simplicity to its character. Um, it's easy to understand, feels like an M car, just one that's sort of jacked up a bit and a bit more usable and comfortable and real world, you know? That's how it should feel. Okay, so that was the X3M competition on the road. And this is about to be the X4M competition on the track. This is Monticello Speedway, not far north of New York. Now, I am reliably informed that the axles, the suspension rates, the steering, the brakes, pretty much everything that matters to the driving experience is the same on this car as on the X3. So what we're about to learn should be pretty transferable between the two cars. Obviously the X4 is a bit lower, probably a bit lighter, but you know, we're talking pretty fine margins and difference. Right, so we can interrogate for the first time what this engine really does for the car. Is it fast enough? Can it move it along quickly enough? Mm. Well, first impression. turbo like the Alpha Stelvio's got but I mean that's not what BMW 6's have been all about they're about this lovely linear torque delivery that just keeps going all the way to 7 and there it goes quickly seems to sort of bang the ratios through nicely you've got your three shift modes for sort of slow medium and fast this is in fast it's very good you've got four-wheel drive mode four-wheel drive sport mode and as far as this car is concerned that's your lot in an m5 you can go down to two wheel drive sort of drift maniac mode if you prefer even so, this thing still feels pretty balanced, I have to say. There you go, it feels pretty rear driven. There's lots of adjustability on the throttle. Still feels like an M car. And it's nice and precise and scrolling a bit through the corners, but I've got the dampers sort of deliberately set down to the medium, the middle mode, sport mode rather than sport plus. I was driving it earlier in sport plus, and it just begins to sort of struggle a bit with the, the lateral load and the and the mass because this is a fast car you can carry some serious corner corner speed and when you do those dampers when they're really firmed up they just begin to sort of struggle to cope with the mass of the car a bit and it starts to pogo on the outside rear wheel sport mode the middle mode just makes body control a bit more fluent and for the sake of a little bit of body roll you feel like you've got a more sort of pretty unreasonable thing to do to a two-ton SUV, isn't it? I mean, any two-ton SUV. We're on a track, it's a tough track, it's technical and tight, and it's demanding, and the car's coping with it absolutely fine. And the car feels like a proper M car. Maybe the bigger problem for this car is that it maybe it doesn't have the duality that some SUVs of its kind has. You know, it's a proper M car, yeah, up to a point, but it, it doesn't do the sort of wafty, comfy SUV thing on the one hand, at the one moment, to then do, to 
then be able to do the, the really convincing sports car impression next man. It kind of is what it is. You take it or leave it. I would be quite inclined to take it. <laughs> 